Hello ladies. Hello. So, today, like my usual, excuse me if I cough, I have like a horrible sinus infection. Um, or if you hear my <coughs> puppy barking, or I think he just got on the couch behind me, uh, bear with me. Alright, so, today, actually I should get my phone, today we're going to talk about how to basically not be the family that you come from. And I know a little something about that, unfortunately. Um, I did not grow up in, I want to say, the most healthiest household or a household that was conducive to living your best life. Okay? Now, of course, there was good times. Of course, there were a lot of good times and there was also a lot of bad times. But the bad times, I want to say, were not your normal bad times. Normal bad times are I got in trouble for not doing my homework and I can't watch cartoons for a week. Um, what me and my brothers experienced was uh, not that level of uh, discipline. It was more of that um, <coughs> like old school uh, child discipline, which is just honestly, I don't care what anybody says, it's just straight up abuse. Um, and that's what we experienced, and we also experienced a lot of emotional and uh, verbal abuse as well, name calling, screaming in our faces, yelling, shouting, like directly at us, like we was a, a person in the street. And yeah, so that type of stuff, in my opinion, is not something that would make an adult the best person they can be because you have to then work through all of that to get to where you need to be as an adult. Now, if I had had um, a different upbringing where, in fact, it was a more supportive, more gentle, more loving, more kind household, I, of course, would have been, I, I probably would be a different person than I am today. I really would be. Um, because, unfortunately, for a lot of people, your upbringing plays a major role in your self-esteem, it plays a major role in how you conduct yourself with other human beings, it plays a major role in your friendships, relationships, it pl even your work life. Um, it plays a major, major, major role. So, my um, goal today is to share with you how I was able to overcome that uh, partly because I am not where I want to be, but I want to share how I got closer to where I want to be after growing up and being in such an environment, okay? Because I know there are people out there who have had way worse childhoods than mine, people out there who have had um, the best childhoods and blase this, blase that, but I'm here for the girlies like me who did not grow up with um, the best and are now trying to live their best life even though their environment was not conducive or they were not taught to living their best life. Number one, and I'm not really going to do a lot of numbers because I'll probably forget, you have got to uh, do some self-reflection, you have got to look at your family and honestly see what is wrong with them and sometimes it is hard to see what is wrong with your family when this dysfunction is normalized for you but you have got to try. You have got to look back and say, well, was it appropriate for my parent to bug all the way out on something um, when you look back as an adult on probably something that was a minor infraction as a child? You have to look back on if your parents' um, reaction to whatever you did that was so-called wrong was appropriate. Now, if you do something and you get punished for it, okay, fine, but they are absolute levels um, to it so if your parents were like humiliating you trying to break you down in any kind of way I just want to let you know um, that's really not okay um, to ever do um, and I'm sorry you had to go through that I'm sorry I had to go through that but you have to look at that and see like that was not okay that is not something that I want to continue <coughs> Excuse me, that is not something that I want to continue for myself, okay? So you have to look back, check in, read 
that's another thing. You have to read books on um, healthy family lifestyles to find out where the hell your family went wrong. And I am not saying that your family should be perfect, but certain things in a family should not freaking exist. Um, and domestic violence is one of them. Um, and domestic violence is not always just mother, father, spouse, spouse violence. It could be parent on child violence. Um, even if your child is much, much older than you, not older than you, much, much older than an adult child, it could also be parent on child abuse. But usually it is spouse, spouse, and child being abused by a parent or a caregiver. So you need to read books, specifically, in my opinion, written by a therapist and psychiatrists that focus and research on what produces a healthy family, a healthy set of children. You need to look and read into that to find out, hey, what the hell went wrong in my parenting to, be not parenting, in my childhood, in my parents' parenting that resulted in all of this chaos. Um, you need to do some self-reflection to see what is the issue and how can you as an adult, because you can't do anything about the past, how you as an adult can help process what happened to you so you do not uh, continue, in my opinion, and to continue to, I want to say, like, carry that with you in a negative way. So let's just say, I grew up with a very um, combative mother who would fight and argue with everybody in the street. So... I know that's not normal. I knew that was not normal as a child. Um, so as an adult, what do I do? I am not like that. I see no reason to constantly argue with people in the street. No. One, number one, I live in New York City. I'm not trying to get shot, and I'm not trying to get stabbed, and I'm not trying to get killed. Um, number two, that is just too much stress for anybody on the planet. No goddamn thank you. All right. So I looked at what was wrong um, in my family and said, nah, I'm good on that. I read some books by some therapists and saw that, yeah, I'm right. That, that is not normal. That is not acceptable, and that should not be continued in the next generation of people. Thirdly, um, in my opinion, you need to get around and befriend some women who grew up or who are um, in a healthy place in their life. So for instance, if you have a friend who grew up with a healthy family dynamic, you will probably notice some differences between her and you. Um, she, I'm not saying they will be a better person or blah, 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 but you will see that they do not stress about certain things that other people stress about because they did not grow up in a household where it was stressed, where they were anxious because they had to constantly worry about repercussions, Okay. So get around some women who grew up in a healthy household, in a healthy family. It, it's like, it is like a breath of fresh air to see a woman who grew up in a great dynamic. Also men, men who have grew, grew up with a healthy family dynamic, they have a very different, from what I'm seeing, there's a thing where people say you grew up on, there's people who grew up on survival, and there's people who grew up on love. People who grew up on love, they have a completely different mindset when it comes to life like they really do and it's not because they're special or anything it's just that they have not had the burdens that other people have had to have as a child thankfully for them because nobody's supposed to go through the stuff that people that some of us has went through so they grow up looking at life through a much better lens they grow up through life without so much baggage they grow up through life without so much trauma and they usually grow up through life without personality problems because they didn't develop a personality problem because they didn't have to protect themselves from the damn drama and the chaos in their family. Okay, also, look into groups, Facebook groups, that are supportive um, on your journey of getting out of the toxic patterns that are not going to help you live your best life, okay? Come on. Me, I had to learn, and I'm still learning more about financial literacy because that was not really taught to me um, as a child, as even as a young adult, by my uh, mother. So with that said, I've had to take all of that on my own, and I'm finally starting to get a hang of it a bit better the older I get, 
and I am proud of myself for that. But that took a certain amount of work, um, dedication to realizing that there was something wrong with that in my family, okay? Um, so financial literacy is something that I had to work on. Financial literacy is something that I am still trying to learn and get a hold of so that I can live my best life because that was not something that was taught to me in my household or my environment. Um, my main takeaway from all of this is to show you and to tell you that you can live a better life uh, than, that was, than what was predicted to happen to you based upon your upbringing. Um, it's not... It's not a bad thing to realize and recognize that you have developed and probably also maintain toxic habits, um, bad personality traits due to your upbringing that you definitely would not have had if you were not raised in such a household. Like I know for me, I um, this is like a moment of transparency, I am not like the most affectionate person and that literally has to do, and I know why I'm like that. I'm also not a person who I share my emotions often and that also has to do with how I was raised because I'm even looking at comparing to my own children who do talk about their emotions and tell me how they're feeling and sometimes it's even TMI and I'm like oh my god um, damn I wasn't expecting that but the thing is they feel comfortable enough to speak and talk about these things simply because they are not in a household, they are not in a situation where I am like cutting off their feelings, ignoring their emotions, uh, dismissing them, or berating them. Like that is not something that I ever want them to experience. So the only way for me not to do that is to constantly check in and to reevaluate what I went through as a child and not do it. And not do it. Now everything is not conscious. Some stuff is subconscious because it's just so embedded in your personality. Unfortunately, because of your upbringing, you have to check in and see what what is going on. Thankfully, I will say one thing I do appreciate in my family was that we were very like, um, my mom was very much, if there's a problem, address it right away like don't pretend there's no problem because eventually it blows up into a bigger problem so I've always kind of been like there's a problem address the problem speak about the problem otherwise um what are you going to do about it like if you don't talk about it if nobody knows about it how can someone address or deal with something that they don't know and um I actually read a quote from a therapist and even my own therapist told me um, if someone doesn't tell you that there's a problem, proceed as if there is no problem because you're not a mind reader. So don't spend your time um, doing that because that is also something that you can develop growing up in a certain household, trying to read everybody's emotions, trying to make sure that you mold yourself a certain way to not cause trouble. Like, no, rid yourself of that. Just rid yourself of that. So in short, because um, I don't want this video to be too long, I just want you guys to know, in order to attempt, try, to live your best life after growing up in a household that is not conducive, because even your parents, if your parents was acting like that, they was not living their best life. They was in hell, okay? If you don't come from a background, excuse me, like that, you can improve your life simply by reading and doing the damn work. You have to admit that something is goddamn wrong. You cannot pretend that you are 100% normal and fine um, coming up from chaos. It is impossible. Now, yes, you may not be as messed up as somebody else, but to sit there and truly believe that you have came out unscathed from the trenches, no, don't do it to yourself. Don't do it. Read, find out, because I was in that state of denial for a while. I was like, oh, I'm fine. Nothing's wrong with me, girl. There's a lot wrong with me that would not have been wrong with me if I would have had a different upbringing. So acknowledge what your problems are. See what areas you want to work on. Read a damn book and you will start to get... In short, read a book. Acknowledge your problems. It's okay to have problems. It's not a bad thing. And see where you gotta go to get to where you need to be. Okay? Don't 
make, and that's another thing, don't let your family try to convince you that everything was normal and everything was okay and everything was fine. I went through that, my mom, my family, oh, it, no, it was not fine. It was not fine. It was not okay. So, do not allow them to do that because a lot of adults, especially the older generation, our parents' generation, they have a very big problem with admitting that, hey, I messed up horribly and I'm sorry. Don't be that person. Look at it, especially if you got kids, do not be that person. It, it will not help you in the long run, okay? So you can live your best life if you check yourself, if you look at yourself, get some therapy, and see what needs to be changed and what needs to be addressed. Because every person, and I almost guarantee you can even Google this, look this up on YouTube, almost every person who has become successful, who has um, come from a horrible background, they literally tell you that they saw that something was wrong with their family. They saw that something was wrong with them because they came from such a family and they did the work to undo the, the, the madness that they didn't put on themselves or in themselves. Like, you're not to blame for your childhood, but you are to blame for any of the unhealthy habits that you continue to carry on throughout your life. Okay, guys? So, I will see you next time. I hope this was helpful. As always, I'm on a journey with you guys to get better because nobody's perfect, but we can do it. All right? See you next time.